Is there a reason you have that firearm with you? Yes. It's a rifle. It's used for something So you were behind me the whole time. Did you see me swerve? Can I get your name and badge number, please? Corrupt cops have a habit for brushing their crimes under the carpet, but on some unlucky occasions, they get found out, starting with the one where cops pulled over a man in his own driveway. On May 31st, 2023, a YouTube user named Me Audit 27 posted a video in which an officer approached him outside his property, alleging that he wasn't able to keep in his lane while driving. The interaction that followed was shocking, to say the least. Get your license, registration, insurance on you. Is there a reason why you're pulling me off yeah, on my got, property? We got a uh, call that you were unable, unable to maintain your lane and you were driving recklessly down the dike. Okay, so you were behind me the whole time. Did you see me swerve? So, you got your license. Can I get your name and badge number, please? Officer Van Team from Clay Township Police Department. Just to let you know, I am recording you. Okay, I'm okay? recording you too, sir. <clears throat> I'm reaching for my wallet. Okay. <clears throat> You guys follow me home every night. Just to let you know. Okay. What's your name? You'll get my. You'll get it on my ID. Okay. Mm. There's my license. Thank you, Brian. Insurance. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Pulled me over because he said I was swerving. He followed me for a whole mile. Not once did he want to answer my question about if he saw me swerve. So, look, they got one, and they got one right there, they got two. The officer clearly had an ulterior motive because he never answered the auditor's question about whether he saw him swerving. You you can come around to this side. You can come around to this side. I can hear you. Are you waving your hand? Do you need something? No, I'm just letting my viewers know that I got pulled over for nothing. Okay. Can I get your name and badge number, please? Thank you. I don't know why you guys pulled me over. You guys followed me for a whole mile. And then he wants to say that I, uh, I got called in for swerving. I asked him if he saw me swerve at all, and he didn't want to answer the question. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll be talking to my coach here about this. So... Cause if he would have, if he would have been suspicious of me swerving all over the road, you. you can hear me just fine. I go, if he would have been suspicious of me swerving all over the road, he would have pulled me over sooner, not in my driveway. Right. <clears throat> so also, I just wanted to know my dispatcher notified us that you got a warrant the RO of this vehicle who you are the RO of this vehicle had a warrant part of the reason for your stop is that at East Point they are not going to come pick you up are you aware of the warrant at East Point no okay what's the warrant for uh, is it a failure to appear for a fail to yield or something fail to yield I've never gotten anything in the mail so so you're aware you have a warrant out of East Point okay let me quick run and see what court it is I don't know off the top of my head yeah okay. that'd be great What's intriguing about these cops is how they always act like the caller is 100% right without any investigation. So you want to contact the 38th District Court in East And Florida. when was that warrant issued? I, I, I honestly, I don't want to go back and look again, sir. If you really want me to, I will, but I would say I, I don't know off the top of my head. And you said 38th District 38 Court? 38th District Court, East Point. Okay, and your name and badge number again? Officer Van Team. Clayton. Van Clayton. Team? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Yep.
cops cannot think critically or logically. They just do what feels right to them. I think they keep forgetting that it's called law enforcement, not feelings enforcement. This was not the only time where a cop pulled out an unexpected warrant on a civilian. Watch this next case where a similar situation unfolded. On July 12, 2024, a YouTuber named The World According to Larray posted a video where he captured his interaction with police officers, where he complained that trash cans outside his 75-year-old handicapped grandmother had been taken away. How the officer reacted to this will leave you shocked. Larray. Yes, sir. So, I came out here by 7 o'clock this morning to put trash out. All our cans were there. Okay. Right? I literally just came out to put more trash in it before... They started, they, they started coming around. I noticed McCann's missing, McCann's gone. Gotcha. So I don't know why we pay taxes, we pay the bill, so I don't uh, know why. So as far as I'm aware, I believe City Hall has collected them, so you'll need to get in contact with City Hall. For what? I don't know. Like I said, I believe the city has collected them at this time, so you'll need to contact City Hall. Who in particular don't need to contact at City Hall? I do not know who. Public Works probably would be uh, the area I would say because this kind of falls into their their realm. Mm -hmm. But City Hall, just call up to City Hall, advise them of your issue, and I'm sure they will be able to put you in contact with somebody. Okay. All right, give me one moment, okay? That's fine. Thank y'all. You're welcome. And I appreciate y'all coming out so no quickly. Now, we've been having a lot of a lot of issues with the city, especially civil rights issues. So they're trying to force us off our lane and we ain't going. But that's why I'm documenting everything as I am. Yeah, yeah, I, I get you. Mm. Good morning. Somebody took our trash cans this morning. We don't know when. We don't know why. Like literally the trash cans. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly, the cop didn't take the man's complaint seriously and shrugged off all responsibility. Upon insistence, he decided to take his complaint. And another thing, and I don't know if they checked, but people keep dumping down at the end of the road, Saucy Road down there. You see the brush and stuff on the side, but even in front of the, um, in front of the, uh, the sewer main thing down there with the gate, yeah. somebody done, somebody done, done, done dumped a lot of, um, boards or wood. Like they pulled up some old hardwood floors. Yeah. So somebody need, need, need to come clean that up, but. I don't know who it is. I don't know if y'all got a camera down there or not, but. I don't know. I was saying City Works probably has this. Yeah. I'm just, bro, I'm just reporting it. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Code enforcement in the City Works. Code enforcement in the City Works. Yep. Hey, double check to make sure y'all cans ain't been stolen too. Are you good? Okay. So it's just us. Like for real, like full of trash. Full of trash, full of full of the, the recycle. Cause the recycle, yeah, cause the recycle guy just came through. One recycle bin and two two of the, the garbage cans. Yeah. No, they always had two. No. Uh -uh. mm -mm. No, I seen the truck when he came when he came through. I talked to the guy. Yeah. Yeah. The man was waiting for the officer to finish writing the complaint, and once he was done, the real action started. What time did you say you came out and put the cans out this morning? Seven. Okay. It's like seven, seven, seven fifteen. Around seven, seven fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I got up. I, I got then, up and ran. You just came back when you called in to us or called into nine one one. Well, that's exactly when I found out they were they were they were gone. Okay. Okay. So I know they I know they was out here this morning because i because I, I got up about six i ran and everything worked gotcha. out a little bit came back in grabbed some more trash 
Pull that thing out. Uh, what's a good phone number uh, for you, sir? Area code 864-357-4545. Yeah. 4545. Yep. And I'm the youngest son of G Georgian Leroy Benton. So gotcha. I'm, I'm the heir to the property and everything. I grew up here. Gotcha. All right. Just give me a few minutes, okay? All We're right. Almost done. Yep. Already investigating Omar, because Omar, Mark, Santino Mark, he came and uh, broke our water well. He damaged it. I know he don't really, don't, don't trust me though. It's being investigated, but it's, it's, it's like, it's too many conspicuous incidents relating to the city. Yeah. When you match everything together, the timeline, I'm like, okay. So. So this is the defining straw in the civil rights lawsuit. In addition to missing trash cans, residents of that area were also at risk of getting their properties burned down as there was no water in the water hydrants in their area. They sent my mom a, a letter, we gotta go to court next Tuesday. I guess for a municipal violation because since they since the city decided to turn our water uh, our, our water off we just I flipped the switch to connect back to our well so now we got we drinking well water it's the same water source right but my question is where do I pick up a copy of that of that violation is it, is it downtown at the it would probably be at our um, police department, our police office. Okay, down at the courthouse? Well, so down on Cantire or the old... I don't think on Cantire. Or the old city hall? I'm assuming at Cantire. Okay. Okay. I'll go down and get a copy of that. So I know my mom, I mean, we, we have a copy, but you know how sometimes they... I don't know whether it was a report or whether it's a file. They just had different stuff in the actual yeah, form of file. Yeah, you just have to go up to the 323 Cantire Street and get it from there. Okay. Okay. They don't really tell you where to go pick up a copy of it. Even if it's a code violation, where to go pick up a copy of it, but I guess... Yeah, it'll be at the police department. You can go pick it up from any right. reports or anything, you go up to there. Okay. Like code violations too? That's where we pick them up from? Yep. Cool. Cool. Now we know. Yeah, me and my wife are roll, roll up there late on the day. After making the man wait for a long time, the other officer finally returned with something very unexpected. All right, bro. All right. His driver license and a case card, okay? Cool. That's the report for everything going on. Um, so there is one other matter we're going to have to handle today, okay? The man was arrested because he had a warrant in his name. So instead of helping him out, the officers actually arrested him, making his situation worse. The man lived in a 100% African-American community. So it's safe to say that there might be a motive behind all that happened. If you think these officers were bad, then wait till you see this next one where a corrupt cop tried violating a man's daughter's rights until he showed up and set them straight. We're going to make sure there's nobody in there with a load waiting to out the window. In August 20th, 24, a man saw his daughter and her boyfriend being pulled over by officers from the York County Regional Police Department in Pennsylvania. They were being accused of brandishing a f during a road rage incident. What the officers did when the man arrived at the scene is just sad to see. Why aren't y'all recording? We recorded the people uh, No, you get pulled over, pull your cameras out, record them, and get name and badge numbers. <laughs> You know you're blocking traffic, right? You know that bus had to go on the grass to get around you, right? Which is illegal. Get around it. <laughs> Sir, you're welcome to banter, record, berate me. It's not going to change what I'm doing out here. Look what you're doing. You're blocking traffic. I couldn't get around you, and the bus couldn't get around you. Do you give a permission to search your car? They didn't see a gun. Anybody can ride down the street and say they saw a f You can be his little bodyguard all you want. Just stay out of my f camera. Who's, who's the uh, name and badge number? That's Sergeant Good, number 14. 
Um, who's the, are you the homeowner here? Why does that matter? Well, because I'm going to talk to the homeowner, see if either one can get search warrant. They're not here. Two. Okay. Does some anybody here live here? There's a couple people that live here. Okay. Any adults? Yeah, there's a few adults that okay. live here. Can I talk to one of them? As usual, the officers responded to a call, and they didn't see a the self, so they were waiting to find a way to confirm the allegations. But the way the dad handled the situation is worth watching. I'm not here to bust your chops. I'm not accusing you of anything. Hey, what you're doing? We got a call, and okay. they are explained to you or no? No, the officers did, no. Okay, all right. So we got a call about a road rage incident. Mm -hmm. They gave description of the vehicle, license plate number, description of the occupants. They said somebody waited on Adam, okay? So it is, he said, she said at this point, okay? Yeah. But we also have to look at the motivation behind that call. Does that happen every day that just somebody randomly just picks out some random vehicle and says, hey, they did whatever? Does it happen? It can happen, oh, okay. but does it happen all the time? So no, go get a warrant. Okay, well then that's what we'll do. You have um, to get a warrant. Okay. All right, we're not good. searching anything on this property without so a warrant. What we're going to do, though, in the meantime, because there's a firearm involved, alleged to be involved, is that we're going to do a protective sweep of the residence. We can do that without a warrant. Okay, We're going to make sure there's nobody in there with waiting to s*** out the windows. Okay? There isn't. Well, I can't take your word for and it. You can't your search that. You're not searching that. A single 911 call is not enough to warrant a search of the property, as the officer implicitly asserted here. They usually need a stronger reason, like screams coming from inside the house or similar situations. How do I see your request of support for a traffic stop today? Is that correct? Yeah, my daughter was pulled over, and now they want to search the house. Um, that's oh. why. Um, hey, I'm Sergeant Good with the York County Regional Police Department. Are you his, are you his representing attorney? Yes, I am. Okay. So what we have is we had a road rage incident where somebody described a, a uh, extended magazine was pointed at them from a vehicle that's here in the driveway. The people that are here in the driveway, the police officers got here and saw them go into the house. And we want to try to confirm whether there's somebody in the house with an extended magazine pistol that was waving at the people or not. I explained to your client that, one, we could get his permission to look for that specific style weapon, uh, or we could apply for a search warrant, And but first we would probably do a protective sweep of the home to make sure there's nobody in there pointing a gun at us right now. They don't have a right to search your home without a warrant, correct? I, I, I told them they cannot enter the house without a warrant. Well, there's a difference between entering the house and doing a protective sweep to make sure there's not somebody in there pointing right now. We wouldn't be searching the house, but we'd be first doing a protective sweep, making sure there's no other people in the house that would do us harm. Then after that, we would apply for a search warrant to search that house for evidence. Yes, sir, but you understand that he doesn't have to give you permission to enter his home unless you have a warrant. Co correct for searching it. The protective sweep, I believe there's plenty of case law saying that we can make sure there's nobody armed and dangerous in there wanting to hurt us. Again, not to search the house, but to enter for a protective suite. Um, you know, it is his private property, so unless you have a search warrant, um, you don't have a right to enter his home. Okay, uh, we might agree to disagree on that point uh, for entry, but uh, anyway, we'll, we'll apply for a search warrant, and as long as these people all stay out here, maybe we don't need to do a protective sweep, and we'll just apply for the search warrant. So, all right, very good. Thank you. No worries. You have a great day, sir. Um, do you, you want to talk to her about, uh, so I understand, I understand his, you know, animosity towards us being here and everything else like that, but we are trying to solve a crime. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk to him that, happened. that they have no witnesses here saying that it happened. Right. We don't, we normally don't have the witnesses. They just took a 911 phone call. That was correct. Sergeant Good constantly appealed to the protective sweep doctrine, but that doctrine only allows officers to search private rooms inside a house if there is reasonable suspicion, which these officers didn't have. I'm trying to look for cooperation, look for a specific weapon. If it's not there, Please great. Don't touch but me again. if, uh, if, uh, you know, if you want to talk to him, see if, if there's anything that he wants to do with us, great. If not, we'll just uh, secure the way we're at now. But we're not going to let anybody go back in the residence until we have a search warrant because very well could be weapons inside. And he's actually admitted there's we other weapons inside. So we're going to be sitting out here for several hours waiting for the search warrant. Okay.
Yes, sir. I just, you know, I have to protect my clients' constitutional rights. No, no, I got it. I, yeah, no, I totally understand. Yep, yep. No, I got it. I just, I just didn't know what all conversation you had before I got here on, you know, whether, whether, you know, and then obviously too. I mean, you know, one, well, if if somebody has this weapon, and they're willing to escort us to it and get it. Great. You know, there, there is, is no weapon there is, they're talking about in this no process. Weapon, if there is no weapon, then I understand that also. But we can't just say, you know, somebody says somebody did the same thing to you. So anybody can call and say, hey, this guy has a gun. And yeah. you're going to, and, and the, they're not here, so they can't say anything. They took a 911 phone call. No, no, we talked to the person. We talked to the person. Notice how the cop threatened to make them wait outside the house for hours if he didn't allow them to search it. These tyrants resort to this method simply to fulfill their egoic desires. So they're looking for it, and there is a bomb in the trunk of the car. Okay. I mean, they're going to get a warrant to search for uh, a gun. So anything outside of the gun, nothing, right? They can take it, right? That's all? Um, unfortunately, if they get a warrant to search the car, um, I, I believe they can press charges for something else being found in the vehicle. Um, but if, but what if we just let them search it and all they find is a bone? It's going to be up to their discretion on whether they want to... I will gonna... smash it and smash it right now, and what can they do just, about it? They can charge you. All right, go away. Okay. Um, so, yeah, if you do give them permission to search, like, and they find something like that, like, just know that... It is up to their discretion whether or not they want to press charges. There was a twist in the situation. The daughter had drunk the trunk of the car, and although the father had a medical license for it, he was not a passenger in the car. Sometimes, you know, when you are cooperative, they might let something like that slide, but there's no guarantee. So, giving up your rights um, in that instance, you have to find out. the charges. I got you. Um, and just so you know, like just because they're going to apply for a warrant doesn't mean that right. they're going to be successful in getting one. Sometimes, you know, when you are cooperative, they might let something like that slide, but there's no guarantee. So, right. giving up your rights um, in that instance, you have to find out. the charges. I got you. Um, and just so you know, like just because they're going to apply for a warrant, doesn't mean that they're going to be successful in getting one. In hopes that the officer would leave if they complied, the driver eventually gives the officers permission to search the vehicle, and the vehicle only. I got the reason to see that I've parked up there, kept an eye on it. It wasn't oh, till- Oh, was parked down there and seen us the whole time. We're outside. Yeah, we kind of see him. Okay. Once we start, I saw him get, get the stuff out of the car. That was for, no, what, I never- what, 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 this stuff. Okay. All right. So they just bring the fishing rod. So nobody carried something in the um, We're again, we're just looking for a okay. large pistol with an extended magazine. So that's it. Okay. 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 All right. Do you have a card? Uh, in my in my card. You got a card? I'll, I'll grab it for you. Then. You ain't got a card? He's brand new. He don't have a card. So so glad I have this app now definitely a good resource. Yes, I can't wait to tell him about this interaction. It's crazy. After searching the car, the officer only found an empty holster and a water pipe in the car, after which they began wrapping things up. Appreciate you guys. Look at the car. Really? No gun in it? Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know why the caller died to me that she saw. saw That's because we were them because they had a bat. Like, they were literally waving the bat out the window. Like, Pull over, pull over, pull over. A bat? Yeah. Like a baseball, a baseball bat? baseball bat, yeah. So they're following. Yeah, they're following up. They, the other people were upset because they both cut, cut them, them off. If I was more certain that somebody could have snuck the gun into the house, we would get a search warrant for the house. But That's the only way you're entering the house. These guys are sent, what's that? That's the only way you're going to enter the house. Right, no, I get, I get that. And I'm, and I'm not here to, you know, Flex on you or anything like that. Okay, mm -hmm. um, but if my guys would have said, 
get uh, somebody carried a bag inside yeah, or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 but yeah, but, but under the circumstances yeah. at that point, I don't, I don't think, think we're gonna. I don't think we are gonna search the house. I don't like to sell you turning on the phone down there. That we felt. I don't think we are since we were able to check the car. I'm pretty certain that nobody's going to be done that now. So they said closer. The officers then conclude the interaction. Watch how they don't fully let them go, stating that they will be back. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna head over to the other half and talk to them. See the. Do they, that have, do, they have, do they have video also? They, they do. Gonna bring up I promise you, they do. I'll ask them to do. They got a video. Yeah. I mean, I, and I'll, I would hope to see yeah. it. Um, they could have also just been holding their phone yeah. to scare they type can. thing, but um, it, it could be multiple things. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, Bile, if uh, I'll see if they have a video. Um, Exactly. Uh, we're not just harassing you guys here. Yeah, we're going to be card. talking yeah. to them and making sure. Um, and, and, the, and the reason why there is four cops is that, you know, one, this is one that we can automatically send two guys on. And then I'm the fifth supervisor, so I'm going to come. You know what I mean? And the other guy was semi close to the south end of Red Line, so I told him. You know what I mean? It's not that, again, whenever we have a call that involves a firearm, we have to just caution. So it sounds like everything's wrapping up there. Is that correct? Okay. It is for now. Uh, I'll let you go for now. If anything else happens, I'll, I'll push the button again. Okay, please do. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. You have a good rest of your day. What's baffling about this incident is that the sergeant kept arguing that someone was waiting inside the house to harm them. But if that was true, why would they be waiting inside? Regardless, this cop got exposed by the man, and he will think twice before violating someone's rights the next time. These cops were thoroughly corrupt, just like the next correctional officers who tried intimidating an auditor with a weapon. Is there a reason you have that fire with you? Yes. Every ball rifle is used inside the facility. On July 28th, 2024, Sean from Long Island Audit posted a video in which he visited the Edoc County Correctional Facility in Alabama. Once there, he encountered some of the most corrupt cops ever. So it looks like we have a correctional officer observing the inmate porters taking out the trash. Who are you? Sergeant Daniel, who are you? My name is Sean. I don't need, my name is Sean. I don't need any help, Sergeant Daniel. Thank you though, I appreciate it. I mean, you can't be recording my guys. I can't be recording who? You can't be recording my work. Why is that? You just can't be. Who, I just, who are you supposed to be with? I just can't be? I'm just with myself. I'm not with anybody. Okay. Well, I need you to go, please. I'm sorry? You need to go. No, I'm okay right here. Thank you. Because I'm recording his workers. You mean your slaves? They're not your workers. They're slaves. I mean, let's call it what it is. Whether what they did or not was justifiable in putting them here and having them work for you, it's still doing work, not getting paid for it. Sergeant Daniel. At least he properly identified himself. That's good. So it looks like Sergeant Daniel brought back up with him to try and intimidate a journalist exercising his rights. As you would expect, the officer brought in more cops to intimidate the auditor. This is what these tyrants do when their sense of false power is even slightly challenged. But this is just the beginning. Watch what the officers do next. Excuse me? Need to leave. Who are you, sir? We need to leave. I'm just asking for your name. Deputy Phillips. Deputy Phillips? My name is Sean, Deputy Phillips. Is there a reason you have that firearm with you? Yes. Every ball rifle is used inside the facility. Well, you're not inside the facility. This is outside of the facility. Yes. This is part of my job. This is my security. Right. I'm just, there's no need for. You are on county property. If you do not leave, I will call somebody up here and have you arrested for trespassing. This is publicly accessible area. No, it's not. There's no restricted area signs or no trespassing signs. You all are correctional officers? Is this a restricted area? Yes. Deputy? It, there's no signs indicating that it's a restricted area? Well, there are, of course, no... 
Yeah, parking. It says parking. I'm not parking, I'm on a sidewalk. There was no need for you to bring that out here. I know you want to seem cool or whatever, but I'm not a threat to you. You don't need to pepper ball. Absolutely ridiculous. It says parking for authorized personnel only. This is parking. Doesn't say authorized personnel only in this area. These people were just gang members in uniforms. Sean was absolutely right. There was no reason for him to bring that fuck there like that, unless he was planning to scare someone, which is probably what he was trying to do. No need for that whatsoever. And again, you have to clearly, just for everybody watching, those signs are not clearly visible when I'm approaching from this public sidewalk here. So we'll, we'll walk back here, even if they were, even though I'm not parking, I'm not parking. As you can see, this is completely an open area, no fences or anything. We saw the judges parking only sign. I came from a public sidewalk. We are on a public sidewalk. Walked over here. All connected. All connected. So tell me how, when I'm walking this way, am I supposed to, or should have, seen an authorized personnel parking only? If it's meant for people, there would be signage here on the public sidewalk saying that this is authorized personnel only in this area, restricted area, no trespassing. But from the public sidewalk that comes off of a public street, this is a public street as well, I walked over here and was filming in the public parking lot. Ridiculous. Well, we'll see if law enforcement comes or not. It looks like uh, all of the correctional officers have gone back inside. That guy coming out here with the, the pepper ball gun, completely unnecessary. After waiting for a while, the auditor finally decided to give his final words and leave. They went back inside. We've been out here for a little while now. No law enforcement ever arrived because we're not breaking any laws. We're not in any restricted areas. We're exercising our constitutional rights. What I've noticed is that when I perform audits on correctional facilities, the correctional officers are one of the worst when it comes to escalating the situation. They are so used to getting their way and bullying inmates that they think they could treat any member of the public that way. And it's disgusting. Coming out here with a pepper ball gun, is that gonna intimidate me? I'm not intimidated by public servants. Public servants serve the public. They are here to uphold my constitutional rights and all of our constitutional rights. With multiple officers, like that's supposed to scare me. Hey, get out of here right now. That, that's not intimidating me whatsoever. It's not going to, it never will. It's just ridiculous. And then to say that this is a restricted area, also ridiculous. They knew better, that's why they left. And that's why law enforcement has, hasn't arrived. I mean, we've been out here for about 30, 45 minutes now since our conversations with the correctional officers and no one came. Why? Because no one is breaking the law. Law enforcement officers enforce the law. No one is breaking the law here. I'm in a publicly accessible area. I'm exercising a constitutionally protected activity. It's absolutely ridiculous. They were completely impotent trying to control someone that was not under their control. They were so confused and didn't have the people skills necessary to communicate with a free person. Do you think there should be a better screening process for hiring these officers? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like the video, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one we have in store for you. Thanks for watching. This is Detective Mystery, signing off.